here is the third female wood frog in the last minute that I've seen on her way to the large vernal pool. So it looks like these males are being very successful with their calls. The woods seems to be coming alive with female wood frogs tonight. Last night we heard more of the males, saw very few of the females. Tonight it looks like we're seeing the females. So that's a good sign. Hopefully these tadpoles will be able to live out their life and then mature and become baby frogs and come back here and start the cycle all over. But it's these females that are very important because they're outnumbered by a ratio from what I've heard according to research of seven to one. Seven males to one of these females. So it's very important that the females get here and they lay their eggs to continue the further generations. These three female wood frogs have the most important task of the breeding season, and that's finding a mate among all of these males. As you can see, all three of these female wood frogs look very different from each other, but despite that, we can still pick them out from the males because they're gravid. Take a look at their stomachs, how wide and puffed out they are. And the most unique thing about all three of these wood frogs is how differently they look from each other. This is arguably the most important night for all of the wood frogs in this population coming on top of this mountain just to breed. With how many males and females have arrived at this breeding ground, it's safe to say that if you don't find a mate in this situation, then you might not find one the rest of the spring. Look at that, right in front of the female. That newt is eating eggs. I can't zoom in anymore. That might be one of the most amazing scenes I've ever captured for Frog Week. That newt is eating wood frog eggs in front of a female that's getting ready to lay eggs. Talk about sending your children out into their destruction. When we first started out this documentary, you could hear only spring peepers, no wood frogs. But right here is where the tide turns and the wood frogs actually start to drown out the spring peepers. And as you can see, the activity continues to pick up with more and more females arriving to mate. And with that being said, the sense of urgency in all of the males continues to peak. This is the most crucial time for a male wood frog. In the wild, it's estimated that they only live for around two to three years on average. That doesn't mean, as we look out and see all of these male wood frogs, that they're only two and three years old. I'm sure that there's probably some that are four, five, six, maybe seven or eight, depending on how successful they've been. However, with it only being a two or three year average, that means that all of these mates are very aware that they might only have this or one more chance to reproduce and further their genes, which is why you see the wrestling and the urgent calls of these male wood frogs trying to lure a mate to their position. If a female wood frog is going to successfully breed on a night like tonight, she's going to have to sift through all of the other male wood frogs trying to grab onto her and her mate. They'll try to dislodge the mate or they'll try to grab onto her for a group fertilization. And as you can see, all of these females are trying to stay clear of the areas where all of the calling males still are. 
Group fertilization is another thing that can take place in the vernal pool with wood frogs. However, it's not something that's ideal for female wood frogs to do, because if they do, they risk the potential for drowning as multiple males will grab onto her and prioritize breeding over her life. And that does happen frequently in the vernal pools whenever it's the explosive breeding season for the wood frogs. Here's a good image of a wood frog, a female that has just made it. Look how skinny she is after laying the eggs, guys. That's what they look like after they lay the eggs. It ain't pretty. She's got to go eat, but she's lost all that weight from carrying those eggs. She probably feels great, but she's also very vulnerable now with being so small, so skinny. She's got to go get herself some ants, some roaches, uh, some earthworms, whatever, you know, falls on her or stumbles across her path. Maybe even a spring paper if she feels like it. Now when she is done mating, she's going to disappear into the forest and you might not see her for quite a while. Usually they don't reappear until we get foggy nights or we get rainstorms or we get like misty fog where it's like sort of spraying outside but it's just really foggy that's what we'll have to look forward to when we find these guys again so it's important with them being explosive breeders you get all your footage you know right whenever the action starts because you only got a limited time they don't go like spring peepers and toads for a long period of time you might get a couple days here a couple weeks there but uh definitely not a month just as one wood frog has mated another one goes in to take her place Look at how she can barely hop because of those eggs. There's so many wood frogs, I have to watch that I don't step on them. That's, it's just unbelievable. Oh, she's going in the water into this part. Maybe she's made her decision. There were some instances where I wasn't able to record the shots that I would have liked to with my camera, so I had to resort in using my iPhone, but I think the shots came out beautifully, and it didn't change what was happening with the height of the activity in this vernal pool tonight. It only gave me the chance to magnify the up-close perspective I had of all of these male wood frogs calling around my rock, and even some of them as well as spring peepers coming up and calling directly on the same rock where I was perched. This documentary is to focus on the female wood frogs and the difficulties that they have and the challenges that they face at the breeding grounds. This documentary was made to highlight the chaos, all of the activity, and everything that goes into the female wood frogs coming to the vernal pool to begin the highest point of wood frog breeding season, and that is the climax of the action, which is unfolding in front of us in the camera. Look at that, already got her. Look at that, already got her. Already got a mate. We got that. As soon as she jumped in, guys. He got himself some. 
I'll take the assist for that one, bud. You can help her lay the eggs. Here is another female on her way to the vernal pool, guys. Here she is. Probably about 10 or 12 females that didn't have a mate yet. And there's probably hundreds of males. So we'll see what happens. Good luck to you, girl. Almost instantaneously as a female wood frog jumps into the vernal pool, she is grabbed by one of the most opportunistic males and also one of the luckiest males that happen to be in the right place at the right time. Guys, this scene is probably my favorite of the documentary. I cannot believe what you're about to watch. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> you want to mate with me? Oh my god, look at this. I'm getting attacked by a wild frog. What a cute little wood frog. Do you know what you're doing? I'm a freaking mammal. What are you doing? What is going on? See, this one has more common sense. This wood frog was by far one of the most bold and also one of the cutest that I'd seen. The fact that he was willing to lunge at my camera and try to use me as a way to allure a female to him. I have no idea how or why he thought this was effective, but shortly after this he realized he wasn't going to get a mate and he hopped back into the vernal pool. This female is one of the lucky ones. She's able to easily kick away all of those males. However, let's look to the right and you'll see a female that's tangled up into a bunch of bachelor male wood frogs trying to get lucky. Like I said, it's almost like hitting the lottery if you're a wood frog tonight if you're able to get a mate. So all of these lucky bachelors are trying to be that frog. Oh my god could easily see how all of these male wood frogs could end up killing her if they were to gather around her in a deep part of water and not allow her to breathe. Look how many of them are coming here. There's like seven of them like on her. Now there's two that are hooked on. I think more keep coming. This is easily one of the most dramatic experiences that you can watch at the vernal pool, how much drama there is. Oh, she broke it. She broke it. All of these bachelors are so upset. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Maybe 13 frogs were trying. But she got away, baby. She made it. All of these male wood frogs know that tonight is their night. This is their moment. The females are coming and responding to their mating calls. It's now or never. So that's why there's such a scurry and such a scramble to secure a mate. And if you got one, you're the luckiest frog in the world. She was a vertical. I don't know if she'll go on her own. Maybe she'll go on her own here. It's not easy being a female wood frog, everybody counting on you to show up to the breeding ground, everybody grabbing at you. You're risking your life to further the genes for the next generation. You hold 
in your stomach the most important piece to the whole population, whether it be the top of this mountain or anywhere else in the world that these frogs exist. This story is one of the pinnacle moments that highlights their lives and the role that they play in the PA Woods and Forests ecosystem. Get ready to check out tomorrow's wood frog documentary. Please like and subscribe and share more with your friends for more Frog Week.